Hey, I didn't expect you guys to be here so soon. So, long story short, um, someone told me that I had to prepare for a shitstorm, but with every shitstorm, there's a silver lining. So, I'm here to figure out what my silver lining is. Ugh, fucking Christ. Fuck me. So yeah, I'm reviewing Catwoman. This movie honestly blows my mind. It really does. So when you see Catwoman, yes, yeah, she wears leather, she wears latex, she does all that fucking kinky shit, but the stew to this level is honestly mind-blowing. First off, make it a Catwoman in general. It's not necessary. You don't need a Catwoman movie. And I don't know why, but they're like so focused on this ancient Egyptian fucking cat that's a, that's a really rare species. Like, like it's a normal thing. Don't give me that shit. It's like it's a rare species. This, if you're going to go fucking this crazy, just say it's a mythological cat. Don't get me wrong. If it's in the comics, it's in the fucking comics. I don't know shit about Catwoman other than she's got the house for Batman. That's it. I'm not a huge Catwoman fan. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. She's always interesting as a side character. But as a main person in her own film, it just doesn't work. I say this time and time again. Just because it works in the comics doesn't mean it works in film. So if that is in the comics, the whole cat thing just doesn't work. It just doesn't. Like, oh, it's a rare species. So, see, they just stalk people. Try to fucking murder them and to see if they will risk their lives for a fucking cat. If I saw a cat on a ledge, I would have pushed the thing off to finish the job. She's like, well, I'm going to save a random stray cat. I'm like, if you fucking got up there, you can get down yourself, you little bitch. And no, no, no. You see, a real hero will do this and do that. But Catwoman's not a hero. But they're like going on this whole thing. She's like, oh, you can do whatever the fuck you want. So... To get powers where they allow you to do whatever you want, you have to test out to be a hero. What if all you want to do is be a villain? So on that standpoint, it doesn't make sense. Because the cat's like, wow, look, you're stealing jewelry. That's cool, but I gave you these powers because you saved the cat. Cool beans, bro. Uh, it makes no sense. Like, that aspect just blows my mind. Like, I remember in the Batman Returns film or wherever the fuck Catwoman showed up in, like, in the 80s, she died, and the cats were like, wow, well, you died, but you were a big fan of cats, so we will give you these powers of a cat. This one's like, wow, we're going to give her this in-depth test, and be like, yep, she's a good guy, kill her, and then fucking she dies, and then, wow, well, she can smell things, she can do this, she can do that, wow. That's stupid. No. I want to talk about the boyfriend. He's such a love interest cliche. Hey, I'm going to be the perfect guy because, you know, this guy just exists. If I found that I'm dating a cat, I would be totally cool with it. But, I mean, like, she's stealing shit, so that's where I draw the line. But she's fucking drinking milk like, with her tongue. She's eating tuna out of the can. That's not weird, but I draw the line where she's stealing things. If I found out my date was eating raw tuna out of a fucking can because she thinks she's a fucking cat, I would like, listen, I tell you this, listen, you're, you're really, really hot, but every time I kiss you, I smell raw tuna, and that just makes me gag. So I don't, I don't, I think it's over. And she's hissing at dogs, she's hissing at people on the fucking street. This guy's like, wow, you're really cute. <laughs> so the, the the whole love interest was just very unbelievable. Like it's still a thing, but it was way worse back then. Where like this love interest is so perfect, it was like designed for our main character. Well, actually, the love interest is just designed for everybody. Like we, I don't care who you are. I always love you. You're really pretty. I'll do this. I'll do that. It just makes unbelievable like conflict and love interest. It just it just doesn't work. And her friends. Or like, hey, we're girls. We talk nothing about men. That's all we talk about. Like, mm, he's a hunky hunk. Mm. Ah, like, that's not how women talk. This was a fucking joke. Like, like all he talked about was men. Like, oh, this girl, the, the, the chunkier one. 
He's like, well, I'm gonna get some dick tonight, y'all. Like, women have other things to talk about other than dick. I'm sorry for the writer and the director, but that's not how women act. I mean, yes, they talk about men, and they men talk about women, but they don't talk about it 24-7 because that's not how people function. It's not always about sex. I'm sorry, I hate to tell you. So there, there's this unnecessary like comedy storyline with this girl trying to get with her doctor. And of course, she gets with the doctor because LOL, because she's faking her injury. So yes, she actually passed out, but then she's like, I'm gonna fake being sick to be with my doctor. Even though that's kind of fucked up because it could have been someone who shot. But like, wow, we don't know what's wrong with this chick because she's constantly feeling ill, she fell, she passed out, which was a real injury, so we really have to check this up, even though we think it's fake, because clearly, her previous injury was real, but someone was shot, sir, I don't care, we gotta figure out what's wrong with her, give them some staples, we'll figure that out later, but don't worry, guys, it's comedy, because she's gonna get some dick tonight, <laughs> let's talk about the writing, really quick, the writing blows my mind sometimes, like, oh my god, Jesus Christ, like, some of the conflict is this bullshit. Let me set a scene for a second. Catwoman is not Catwoman at this time. She is still this innocent girl who saw the wrong thing. Now she's being chased down the sewers. And there's these two goons. With One of them has a gun, one of them doesn't. The one guy's like, listen, we're not going to hurt you. Come out and we won't hurt you. She's like, okay, I don't want to get shot today. So she comes out raising her hands. And then goon number two is like, Fuck this bitch! Ba, 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 ba. And then she runs away. And then the guy with goo number two is like, "Why'd you do that? Next time I'll you do that, I'll shoot you myself." What? What? She was clearly coming out with her hands up, where there was no need for a fucking fight. And he popped seven caps in her direction, and he said, "Why did you tell her to come out, you fucking moron?" What? What do you actually mean? Like honestly, out of all the scenes, that pissed me off the most because. I was falling asleep at this part because I was like, it's a fuck, who cares, who really cares, and I hear, hey, come out, and I was like, oh, what, they caught her, oh, okay, and then, bah, 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 bah. why'd you do that, you motherfucker, I was like, what, now let's get to the main character herself, Catwoman, so what my thought process was, hey, we want to make a female-led movie, about a comic book character. Okay, let's do Catwoman because Batman's doing pretty well right now. But how do we get people to watch a female-led comic book character? Because no one wants to see that because look at Elektra. I mean, even though Elektra was fucking garbage, but like, they're like, okay. Clearly guys don't want to see a female-led comic book character film. Not the point, but that's what they're probably thinking. And they're like, okay, how do we get more dicks in seats? I got it. Well, let's... Remove half of Catwoman's clothing, tear up her fucking pants, give her like this kinky ass bra, and like make her use a whip like it's a fucking sex toy. She's using it in the most sexual way possible. She's not going like, BAM BITCH FUCK YOU BAM! She's going like this, crack, 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 fuck you sir, fuck you. Like, it's just, they over sexualized her because she thought that it was going to get more seats. It's the most disrespectful thing to women I think I've ever seen in film. They're like, okay, we want more dicks in seats, so what we're gonna do is over-sexualize her. Get her boobs popping up like, <sighs> like that. You think that was gonna get more tickets sold? It's called making a good fucking movie, and you make the most cliché storyline ever. Oh, I'm a bad Katie. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. Don't get me started with the, the action scenes. People are like, Oh my god, today's scene, today's movies are involved with too much CGI. It's so unbelievable. Well, let me tell you something, sir. Catwoman kind of, not like she didn't start it, but she made that so painfully obvious. Because the suit's so impractical, they're like, let's CGI all of her. It just looks so bad. And I know you can't, like, do actual stunts like this, because what they're doing is very absurd, and you can't do it. But, there's other ways. It's called... Put a fucking, like, wires on her and make her actually jump. And then CGI the wires out. People do it all the time. But no, see, that involves that bum was effort, so we don't want to do that. There's so many other things they could have done. They could have actually choreographed a fight scene. But no. CGI! <gasps> oh my freaking god, this movie... 
people are going to probably say, okay, listen, it's not that bad. But this one really strikes a nerve with me. It's just because of how disrespectful it is to women. How the studios thought they were going to sell tickets to a Catwoman movie. Why they made a Catwoman movie in general boggles my mind. What did they think was going to happen? They were going to, we're going to make a trilogy and then the third one's going to involve Batman. It's going to be fucking cool. Just stop. So long story short, this movie's bad. Some people can watch this and say, like, listen, I don't see how this is your worst movie of all time. Which is fair. I mean, all film is subjective, but there was actually, and I mean this, not one redeeming quality I could find. I was like, okay, the acting is decent. And then, like, after I was past the fourth, 25% uh, of the film mark, the acting just started dropping drastically. See, in all the bad films I reviewed, like, leading up to this film, I might have never really shared it, but there was always some form of redeeming quality. When it came to Battlefield Earth, I could laugh. When it came to the Emoji movie, I could say, like, hey, it might not be the best fucking movie on the planet, but it's got pretty colors. And that, that was actually my redeeming quality in Emoji movies. Like, hey, it's got pretty colors. Shark Boy and Lava Girl. It's got the greatest memes out of this entire franchise that I've been doing. Just like, I did not. Mr. Electric sent him to the principal's office and have him expel. Greatest meme ever. When it came to, uh, what was it, uh, Speed Racer, movie cracked me up at some points, especially in the first half. That was fucking hilarious. This, I did not laugh one time. It is visually disgusting. It's so Zack Snyder glossy, but with like a piss tone all over it. It's really, really bad. Bad. Like, I couldn't even like the action scenes, because not only were they induced with CGI Catwoman, like, every shot only lasted, I think I counted up, like, the longest shot in an action scene was, like, three seconds. Like, not one Mississippi, two, no, one, two, three, boom, cut, next shot. And I, I think the entire film, there was not one shot that lasted longer than ten seconds. The only shots that really lasted that long were these ugly swooping shots, like, they were trying to be all cool and dramatic. But they, they were way too fast, they were way too amateurish. There's not one redeeming quality. I couldn't laugh. I, I didn't feel any emotions. And the worst thing a film, in my opinion, is to make you feel emotionless. Because what a film is supposed to do is draw some form of emotion. Yes, I got angry. But I wasn't angry with the film. I was angry with the filmmakers. So, this entire film is a dead emotion. There's nothing to this movie that I can leave saying, wow, I learned something, or wow, that made me feel this, let's talk about it. Nothing I can really say about how I feel. Everything about this series, I've said, wow, it made me feel this, A, it made me feel that. But those were about the movies. There's something about this that just says, wow, I'm dead inside now. Congratulations. Because when I finished watching this movie, I was I don't know what to do. And then I popped in Ready Player One and I smiled. There we go. So long story short, yes, that's why this is my least favorite film of all time. Because it gives me the least emotion. It would be angry, happy, sad, laughter. It didn't make me feel anything. It just made me feel disgusted in the world we lived in. Or, or, and live in, because our world is pretty disgusting today. But, so that is why it's my least favorite film of all time. I hope you guys enjoyed. I would like to hear some suggestions of what films I should review next. Hopefully, I continue to do this for 50 films, and then I'll do something really, really bad. Because I have something in mind. Or 25. Probably 25 would be a little more realistic. So, in our 25th review, I think I got something special for you guys. I'm going to rate this movie 0 out of 5 stars. Oh, God. It's just so fucking bad. Hey. <laughs>